So welcome, welcome, Svenja. Thank you for having me. Thank you so I'm much for being you and coming on. I'm so happy. <laughs> and I'm so happy in our new like studio, we get to just chill like this. New studio? On mic, hello. Hi, and Laura <laughs> Lucetti's with us on mic. It's been a while. It's been a while, but I'm happy to be here. I'm so happy you're here. Um, I did have, I didn't have water this morning. Svenja has, has coached me before. Wait She's, a second. How would you dare I did, meeting me? <laughs> I know, but I did have a green juice. Oh, that's good. liquid. Yes, that's good. That's liquid before this coffee right yes. now. Okay. That we works. got on a phone call and she was like, um, <clears throat> it was actually pretty astute of you. You were like, one step at a time. Yes. Water. Uh-huh. Water. Two cups of water before coffee. Yes. And then what was the other? You you held, held me accountable for a couple of things. It was water and it was not waiting too long until I eat because then I... Because eat, you wait too long. Because I wait too yes. long. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. And then I eat too much. But I think it's because you said something that was so astute. You were like, because your body's in fight or flight. Exactly. Your body's very stressed when you wait too long. Like all the people who do like this intermittent fasting and then wait for like 16 hours, that's crazy. It's very stressful on your body. Mostly for women though, right? Like Especially I, for women, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel so proud of myself when I do wait that long. I mean, it's like, great, you're proud, but like to it's what actually, end? Yes, too long. It's too long. Yes. So I've I've um I've changed that thanks uh -huh. to you. I'm uh -huh. sure there was one more thing. Oh, a probiotic. I did buy yes. a, a probiotic. That's great. Thank you so much. And I started using magnesium before bed. Mm -hmm. Falling asleep is not like the most intuitive thing for me. Yeah. Oh, I have the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so funny. I get so mad at my kids for not falling asleep mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. And then there I am like two hours later in the same situation. I, you know? There are like so many situations when I cook dinner for them and like nobody's eating and I get so frustrated. I'm like, why don't you eat this? And then I realize, imagine like somebody's offering you sushi and you're totally in the mood for pizza. Oh my God. You would never have that sushi. I know. Isn't that so weird when like you finally like click your brain around and you're like, oh, they're people. They're, oh, people. Oh, yeah. oh human people. Oh, <laughs> exactly. oh my, right. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. But I forget all the time. A hundred percent. We offer them like, why don't you wear the jeans today or the blue shirt? And she's like, no, I'm not feeling. And you're like, what? You <clears throat> wear this. Wear and, this. Just and then you realize my life like, easier. why would I wear green if I want to wear black? Right. Yeah. It's like human beings. Yes. Well, because right, they're human beings, <laughs> right? Okay. Because they have like wants. And, and they and suddenly you... turn into those human beings after like two years or so. Yeah. After two, <laughs> I, I think that people are people from the start. A hundred percent. But like, but I might have also, yes. I think when they're like, when they're, When my babies were really, really little, I gave them a little too much credit. Uh huh. <laughs> like and now, I'm like just trying to find the middle the ground, the, ba the balance. Like, okay, okay. Can you introduce yourself to those of us who don't know your beautiful biting uh, smile, smile. <laughs> um, and your amazing personality? Yes, I thank you. you so I'm Svenja. I am. Um, um, it's very hard to put that head on. I Which am a, part? Like just a, like the title, like who are you? Oh my gosh, you want yes. to hear something crazy? I don't know if you noticed this about uh -huh. Svenja, but she sent in her bio. Can you read her bio? Sure. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever read. People's bios say like, I do this for my job and I've, uh, you know, I have this many kids and blah, blah, blah. Look at what Svenja wrote. I'm totally curious now. Do you know, are your mom curious? <laughs> yes. I would describe myself as a sensitive, funny, passionate, warm person. I care a lot about others. I'm a fashion designer who took a different path and is all about healthy living now. I truly love to inspire others and see other people thriving in my daily fuel. Role modeling my girls how to be empathetic, respectful, and honest is what brings me joy. And people don't write bios like that. Oh, <laughs> you like people write bios about all the things that that they think I don't know they think are impressive, and you wrote a bio from your heart. Like I am empathetic, and I I like it was so beautiful. Thank you. It was so beautiful because like that is exactly who you are. Thank you. You uh -huh. happen to have this really awesome business uh -huh. as a nutritionist, as a re recipe developer. You have incredible style. You have a whole <laughs> community of people both in Germany and in New York who follow you. And um, I mean, and and you've you've changed 
lives with, with 100%. Your, yeah. yes. yes. So I'm actually a fashion designer. I worked in fashion for almost 10 years in Germany. Um, and then we moved to the city. Um, and then that changed everything. So um, I was actually in my job and I really loved it. It was a very stressful job, of course. And I try to be pregnant. I, I try to become pregnant. And then it, I had two miscarriages. Mm. So when we moved to the city, it was kind of like a total, like a stop, like a zero. I couldn't work because I didn't have the work permission in the beginning. So, um, and this is what brought me to my new path because I used that time to, um, to do yoga teacher training. Then I was immediately pregnant, of course, because I didn't have that stress anymore. Oh, wow. So I, um, and then I took the next step, like one step after the other. And I was always very passionate about, um, healthy living, like good food. Um, so I find it was like, okay, I'm going to do this now. Mm. So, and this is how it started. That's so cool. So when you came from Germany to New York City, which is where we are right now, you didn't have kids? It was just you and your husband? It was just, yes. And the funny thing is that he, fun fact, he um, got the job offer and we were only, we were together for like two years or so. Um, but then it was like, okay, are we going to get married now? What are we going to do? Um, wow. Because of course, visa situation. It's Like he had that visa and I didn't have anything. So uh, he's like, yeah, hold on, hold on, relax. We're going to figure that out. So um, we got married on July 4th. <laughs> like the independent day oh it was not like so the independence independence day. <laughs> exactly so we got married and he literally like it was a saturday wow. he left on the monday and i had to wait for my visa to like follow him a week later oh my gosh so this is how we got here and like what well, like an american dream story yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what year was this 2015 and did you expect that you'd stay this long um i mean I think his contract in the beginning was for like three years, but uh, I was, I don't know, it's the city. I was, from the first moment on, I was just like hoping we could stay longer. And it's been seven years now and... This is counting. home. Yes, yeah. this is home. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, this is where your kids were born. Yes, exactly. Born and raised. And um, I mean, they're, they're they're cooler than I am. They're born in the city. They're no, into skulls. Yes. No, but then, like this is this is home now. And of course, I get the question a lot. Like every time I see my family, everybody's asking like, when are you coming back? When are you coming home? Yes. And I always say like, I don't know, because this is our home now. Like mm. we have all the friends here. We don't have family here, of course, which is sad, but... um. We have friends who are like family. Yeah. 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 Is it weird to have American children and to be like, you're from a small town in Germany, right? Yeah, ish. Uh, yeah. Not, yeah. Um, I mean, nothing compares. <laughs> <laughs> nothing compares to New York City. <laughs> yes. But like you um, live in the heart of Manhattan. We live, yes. And I, I must say that in the beginning, I didn't realize how special it is actually that the girls they speak both both languages it really is so special and um i really took it for granted i was like yeah and now i realize how amazing it is that they are like my younger one is four and she like yesterday she told me that she told her teacher um what rainbow is in german mm. i'm like wow how do you even know like the difference between two languages when you're four. It's so cool. So I think it's very cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it really, um, I, I was raised bilingual. Did, did, when did you learn English? Just at school. Just at school. Yeah. So it's like a different thing, yes, actually. Yes, it's not my mother language or anything. It's right. Just, yeah. Well, because when you're raised bilingual, I think you just have a more poetic experience of life, right? Yes. Like you know that, that uh, I don't know, that... That it's a it's a couch, but it's also something else in someone in a different language, yes. in a different culture, mm -hmm. and like you sort of understand that like not things aren't one way. Yeah, yeah. There's something about the brain that works in a different way because they can connect it. They, I feel like they started um, speaking a little later, but it's like they're connecting dots, and now they can connect which language to which person they have to speak. Yeah, it's really they incredible. know immediately. And even when we got to Germany um, last week, my younger one was like, oh, they speak our English. I'm like, yes, yeah, so our English is German. <laughs> they speak our English. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God, that's amazing. It's so cute. Yeah. That is so cute. Wait, so you go visit? We try to go twice a year, yes. Summer and um, for Christmas then. Um, but, um, of course, the pandemic, we couldn't go. But we really try to go twice a year. Is it hard not having family, especially during the pandemic? 
Yes, nearby? yes, of course. I mean, the thing is that I don't know the difference. Right, because you didn't have kids before. And I, right? I don't have like a granny next door, which would be amazing. Yeah. Um, but we found our way. We have a babysitter, we have friends we can rely on. And um, I guess it's more organization. It's not I can call my mom be like, oh, can you just come over and just yeah. take my kids? Yeah. Uh, it's organization, but we're used to it. And it's, I don't know, probably it's special. It's so special. Uh -huh. What I find really special about you also is that somehow you have found a way to still work in Germany. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? Which is amazing because when I um, started this like whole holistic food nutrition path, um, I knew I wanted to start my own business because I, I knew I didn't want to go full time to corporate and then see my kids only on the weekends or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why... I, Another reason why I did not ever start working in fashion here when I had kids, because it was just yeah, a different priority. And, and because you're so heart-centered. I yes. mean, it's like if that bio says no, nothing else, it's that you are all heart, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, and not that corporate people aren't necessarily, yes. yeah, but no. that, that you want to lead with that yes, part of yourself. Totally. Um, so I wanted to start that business, and then the pandemic hit, and um, I was almost done with the school um, And then I was like, well, actually, everybody's used to doing Zoom calls now. Everybody's used to doing FaceTime um, on screen. It's like, this is actually a cool opportunity for me now because I can do health coaching with people all over the world because everybody is, yeah. is open to do this now. Yeah. So, and this is how it started. It was like really in 2020, in September 2020, I actually started my, my business then or my company. Or Wow. And I do find that for whatever reason, food has really like gotten more exciting I don't know like <laughs> I, I've I've made more and more friends mm -hmm. who are like Instagram food accounts yes isn't that like a sign <laughs> I think it's a sign I think people are realizing like we need to take care of ourselves and mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. things are getting more expensive yes like eating out is more oh my expensive goodness, yes. mm -hmm. um eating healthy is more expensive yes um and so you you provide education around how to make that manageable. Yes. And also how to make it easy because I'm all about um, eating more, more veggies, like eating like health, having a healthier lifestyle. Um, and this is definitely about like eating like probably more whole foods, more home cooked. Yeah. Um, so, and this is just all the convenient food, like all the like processed foods are just like, so when you look at the ingredients, there's like so many like junk in it and you really don't want to put this in your body. I know. So, um, um, yes. And then in the end, you always say like, oh, it's so complicated to make that um, pasta sauce from scratch. I'm like, no, it's actually not. It's actually so easy. You just dump tomatoes on, in the oven and then you blend it and then you have like a homemade sauce without whatever is in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's pretty cool that you also like have somehow been able to market all the way from Germany to New York. Like, so you're using your bilingual sort of skills yes. to talk to both markets. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it's, it's sort of genius from like a business. I mean, I feel like, and then like, even at, like we'll go out at night and like, you'll like, you know, see the, the, um, You'll see New York in this sort of romantic, adventurous way, mm -hmm. you know, which mm -hmm. is which it is for you, right? Yes. Like it's about romance and it is. and it's... your your adventure with your husband and like, and so you like film it, you know, almost for the people back in Germany. Like, look, like look where I am. It's pretty yes, special. Yes, because I feel like every, like the city is like a magnet for everybody. Like mm. people love to come here, and people love to see. Like I got in the beginning. I didn't do this a lot. And then I got messages like, why? You live there. You should share that. Yeah. So uh, I really try to do it more and more. And then sometimes I have those moments where it's like, whoa, I live here. Yeah. It's, it's New York. So. Yeah. My uh -huh. father, my father is from Israel and like he always, there was always a part of him that want, wanted to move back or wants to move back. But like it, he always says like this city, it just grabs you. Mm -hmm. It grabs you. And it can be so mean and so... <laughs> it can be so mean. You know, when we got here, I thought it was horrible to make friends, to find friends. Mm -hmm. It was different than in Germany? I don't know. I never had that situation to be like completely new in a new setup. You know, like when I started studying, you know, you, you meet people through like through work or whatever. So we got here and then my husband started working and I had all the time... To make, and I had like only like a few people I knew 
I was like, yeah. okay, cool. I'm going to find friends because I, I love making friends. You're so it was so hard. Mm-hmm. People are so um, self-centered and just like, <laughs> I went to the same yoga studio. I was like, I'm going to make friends there. Right, because there's like zero. Right. Not even one person. I went wow. every day at like 9 a.m. I went to the yoga studio. I was like, oh, I'm going to make friends. Like nobody. I was like <laughs> the weird person like waving to others. <laughs> like, I can't really be friends. <laughs> nobody wanted to be friend, my friend. Um, but then when I had, my first daughter, all of a sudden, I had a million friends. Right, because everyone wants to make new friends in motherhood. Exactly. Yeah. And I was yeah. overwhelmed. I said, wow, this is so amazing. Because Can now the I've- two of you get into that a little bit? That's interesting. And uh, uh, like, yeah. And uh-huh. well, like, uh, from my side of the fence, don't understand, not don't understand, uh-huh. but like, let's get into that. Yeah, That's cool. good. Yeah. So when I was pregnant, I, um, I, I took. Again, I took prenatal yoga classes. I was teaching at a studio and then I got to meet a few others. Um, and one of them recommended joining a mom, it's really called the mom's group. Mm. And um, I was like, well, whatever, there's nothing to lose. I pay, I don't know, $200 for like six sessions, which I thought is ridiculous. But I mean, it's anyway. all ridiculous. We're working today. Um, <laughs> and it turns out that was like life changing because um, this woman um, was connecting women with like newborn babies in one area. Yeah. So I found like 10 moms in the same neighborhood, like all like 10 blocks away. And we got to hang out at the playground or, and then all of them knew other moms from their building. So all of a sudden we always went to the same playground. It was like a whole gang of people. That's how I met Neha, by the way. Yes. Through that community there. Neha, the, our first um, guest actually. Oh, that's Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, you know, uh, Laura was asking why it, it might be that we need new friends as, as mothers. I, I think you're stepping in a, into a whole new identity. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a whole new per. I mean, yeah. people always say like, you, 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 have that, you have that baby and then you, you just, you totally change. Like everything changes. The everything whole schedule, changes. You, you change. Yeah. So um, I think it's very important to have to find friends who also, are in the same position. And who don't hold you to the same standard of being that person that yes. you were before. Yes. They have no mm-hmm. interest in you being the way you were before, mm-hmm. to have the same goals, to have the same schedule. They're just meeting you for the first time. And I think that tension around, like, you know, certainly at your job or with old friends, People are holding you to who you were, I don't know, the day before you had a baby. Uh-huh. Yes. You're just not that person anymore. And also, you just mentioned that all of a sudden you have like a lot of food friends. I do, by the way. and uh, It's a real thing because is it, it's, is it more popular or is it just like a, a I don't thing? know. It's probably you attract like you attract more mom friends then oh. and you attract more. It's like what's interesting for you. And I think what's very mind blowing is when you have that baby and then you you're not sleeping and you're tired and I don't know there's like a lot of things happening and sometimes my husband was like yeah but this is not normal I'm like yeah because you have no idea but it's totally normal everybody has the same problem right now (laughs) tired not sleeping whatever and um sharing this is just so important yeah it is so not no like to know that you're not alone which is also something that is very important for my my company is like building a community that because they there are always others. Yeah. You're not the only one who wants to lose weight. There are tons of women who just want to lose weight right now and do not feel comfortable in their body. Yeah. There are others who don't sleep right now. And even when you're awake at nights, like nursing your baby, it's like, oh cool. I know at least five others right now. Yeah. <laughs> Doing the same. It's so it's so much of why um we're doing this this work. You know, I think like the I don't think society is built for human life. <laughs> I just think like <laughs> we need to be doing this together more uh-huh. often, yes. you know? Yes. Um, and in whatever way, and if it's in this digital sort of medium, mm-hmm. just like stretching our hands out to other women. Yes. I think it's, it's, um, and being like, you're, you're in this together. Um, yeah. There's nothing worse than just feeling, feeling alone or like, not empowered because we can empower each other. We can do this together. Well, you you were the one who put together this like gorgeous event with Neha. Yes. And that's how uh-huh. I met Jess Crux. Uh-huh. Uh, Everybody's favorite girl crush. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's such I, – I, over and over and over again, we talk to people and it's like um, what what sort of ails us is also what propels us forward. Mm-hmm. You were lonely. Mm-hmm. You were like, I'm the friendliest, happiest lady. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm such a good hang. How are you not interested in being my friend? <laughs> so you created your own community. Yes. Supporting other people. Yes. Uh-huh. You launched this business. And – even just in that one event, there were so many connections made. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's I amazing. Love that. Yes, yes, because um, I don't know. The idea came up, and I just love doing this. I love to connect others. Like in the past, people called me glue because I really like to connect people and like <laughs> bring people together and introduce others, and that really makes me so happy. So um, that event was very special because I it was it was so funny because I knew half of the people, women coming there. Yeah, because the other half And then there were others people. that I just wanted to meet, like Jess. Oh. I invited her because I'm like, selfishly, I want to meet her in person. Oh so can God. you just come? <laughs> so, um, and I invited a few and some maybe did not reply or some said like couldn't make it. It was just, anyway, it was a selfish evening because I just wanted to hang and wanted to see others and meet others. And then Neha brought her friends and I brought some friends. So it was really like, a mix and mingle. I don't know. Yeah, I, I've been special. trying really hard to uh, like do exactly what you did because uh-huh. we're coming up on our one year anniversary, and I uh-huh. thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could get a bunch of ladies together? Uh, yes. Um, you made that look so easy, and it's not as easy as one might think, but it was really nourishing. It was, especially yes. coming out mm-hmm. of the pandemic mm-hmm. and not having many events. And no, and it was really one of those evenings that is like. Wow, that really fills your your empty cup for the next two weeks or so. That really gives you energy and just yeah, and then makes you fly a little for like a week with energy. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. You have a question? It's just such a beautiful way to put it. That like glowing, you know, that ball of glowing energy in your heart when you walk away from a space with like a lot of amazing mm-hmm. women, uh-huh. and you get to like just be enveloped in that like uh-huh. space and energy is such a beautiful thing. Well, I, it seems like now people are more comfortable getting mm-hmm. together, obviously. Mm-hmm. And we're Which get, is so we're, nice. Oh, yes. my gosh. Thank you. And God. I feel like you appreciate it much more than ever before. I know. Going out, seeing others. I mean, before 2020, I think people would like look at the holidays as something like really dreadful. Like, mm-hmm. Ugh, I have to see my family and oh, <laughs> do, uh, get dressed up and blah, blah, yes. blah. Uh-huh. And, and maybe not. Maybe that was just me. But <laughs> I don't feel that way anymore. I'm excited. Yes. The one one thing I will say is that I think there's some like hard earned healthy habits uh-huh. that maybe some of us yes. don't want to let go of. Uh-huh. I, I don't know. I thought I have you here. Uh-huh. You've been a real resource <laughs> for me, which I've loved so much. Let me tell you, being hydrated is a whole other life experience. Yes. <laughs> Drink water, friends. Um, do you have some tips around the holidays, how to keep your healthy habits going, how to still enjoy mm-hmm. all these things. I'm sure there's like going to be a lot more drinking and of course. Uh, I mean, that. one thing I must say is that um, I'm a total health freak and I love kale, <laughs> but at the same time, we're only here for a little time, so we should really enjoy that. Yeah. So what I always recommend is, um, or what really works for me is like. I always say like I do like 80-20. I do 80% really like healthy and good and stuff. But then there's 20% and this should be fun. And this can be a drink. This can be something, a cake, whatever, treats. Um, So I think when it comes to the holidays, I think it's very important to enjoy it. Mm. And um, if you are like on a good path and you're like trying to really like stay hydrated. So this is the first thing I would probably recommend everybody doing like start like really start don't forget to drink water stay hydrated um even during the holidays i would always recommend to try to add some sort of veggies to your plate um so when you have that turkey for thanksgiving make sure you also eat like some of the veggies yeah um it also helps to start every meal start by eating the veggies and then eat the rest so that you're filling up a little bit more on the on the good part Mm. um this is something that's very helpful and at the same time, I'd also like enjoy it. It's like enjoy only it. the two days and then we can totally get back to the routine, which at a certain point you're probably craving because I feel like it always hits the 
point after three days of like eating and stuff, you're just like, whoa, and now I really want that salad. Yeah. Or I really want to be at home, make my own meals and come back to my own routine. It reminds me of when you told me about how my body was in fight or flight, like that's no way that I, I can't digest that way mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So if you're enjoying, then your body can like, you know, take in the nutrients. Yes. Let go of the rest. Yes. You know, actually enjoyment, like having those like, those oxytocin feelings. Exactly. The, the connection, the, dopamine, the joy. Yeah, yes. the joy, the connection. Mm -hmm. That actually is what you're also ingesting. Mm -hmm. Totally. So. That fuels your plate. Um, I'm all about like, it's not like food is pleasure and joy and maybe also medicine. But then there's also the 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 rest, like everything that's around your plate. And that really nourishes you too. Like yeah. the emotions, having the joy of connection and... Um, Yes, so I think that's very important to fill that cup too. <clears throat> yeah. Um, But also there's something about, um, which I hear a lot when I work with clients, is that they have the tendency to overeat. Yeah. People have the tendency to just like eat too much food because it gives you some sort of like satisfaction, that like feeling of being totally full. Yeah. So there's something um, about the holidays that I always recommend. I'm, I'm totally against food waste or anything. But when you look at your plate, and you probably get the full plate from your parents, grandmother, mm. whatever, when you look at the plate and then maybe try not to eat all of this, maybe only yeah. eat 80% and then check in with yourself and see, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I've eaten enough now. Well, that's what's so interesting. I, I once, when I was like in recovery for, for overeating, for binge eating, mm -hmm. I went to a nutritionist and I was, I was sort of like dead set on finishing everything in my on my plate. Mm -hmm. She was like, why? Yes. And I said, I just don't want it to go to waste. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, it's either the garbage as a garbage. Or your body as a garbage. Yes. And it's so funny because also my dad, like he always finished all our plates because... Um, the dad always does that. Yes. And he, of course, he has a little belly and he's like... This is just because of all you, because you never finished. Wow. And I get that with my kids. It really drives me nuts. When I cook, they mm. don't eat. And it's like food waste. I really hate it. But it, and she's so right, because either you put it to garbage or it's your body and then you really don't feel right. So um, just the mindfulness, be mindful of what you put into your body and how much. Well, I'm also hearing the advice around staying close to yourself. Like mm -hmm. as much as you're, you know, in this sort of, extroverted experience, like maybe at a party or at a, you know, a dinner, focus on the joy of being with other people, but don't forget to be with yourself, yes. right? Like mm -hmm. if in two days, you know, you've eaten a lot, you've drank a lot, normally you will get the sense like, oof, I could really use a glass of water mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're listening. Yes, exactly. You know, yeah. like it's so, it's so often I'll feel like, oh, I've, I've eaten so much. I'm just going to eat more. That's not what my body's saying. That's what my brain is saying. Mm -hmm. That's not from like, you know, real yes. listening to like what's going, what's going on, on on the inside. That's what's, that's sort of mental chatter, which I think is, yes. it, it's, it's subtle. And it's so found. important. And I yeah. think it's very fascinating because kids can do that. Kids can do kids that. Kids stop yeah. eating when they're full. Oh my gosh. Do you think I'm just jealous of Paz that she just like, yes. she just like eats and then she like uses that energy to go play, to mm -hmm. kiss, to hug, uh -huh. to, you know, hit Ness, I don't know, yes. to do something yes. productive uh -huh. with that energy. Uh -huh. And I just feel so frustrated all the time. Like, yeah. sit down and eat. Like, uh -huh. she doesn't doesn't need a lot of food. No, she's and, small. Yes. She's petite. She, I mean, yes. she's she's small. She's healthy, but she's strong. And like, I don't know what's going on on the inside of her body, mm -hmm. but um, they know. And they have such they a know. tiny she knows, yeah. stomach. And, and even they... You have such a tiny stomach? No, they, they, the kids. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm like, you but, do. Uh, <laughs> no, but when I feel like when kids get up from the table, then most of the time they're just full. I know. And we we can't do this anymore because we're like, oh, we're eating more because mm, it's fun. It's mm, delicious. So just being mindful. Yeah. To, and to be around mm -hmm. that experience is so interesting. Actually, Ness is like, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. And then all of a sudden he'll eat like... A whole Chipotle yeah. burrito. Guys, uh -huh. have you ever seen how big a Chipotle burrito is? <laughs> it was literally the size of his, of his face. face. <laughs> and I was like, 
does your stomach hurt? He's like, no, nah, I feel great. You know, he like slept <laughs> well that day. Him, like, yes. It's really interesting, uh-huh. you know, this idea of like square meals and, e- or, uh-huh. you know, every three hours or yeah. three meals a day. Like it's such a structure imposed And we overthink. Us. We just overthink. And kids are just like, I'm hungry. Give me a snack. The overthinking is something that I think like right, as chatter. adults, I don't even know. This mm-hmm. is the thing. I have a question for you. I spent a tremendous t- amount of time and energy and money, you know, shopping at organic grocery mm-hmm. stores that we all know mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> buying things that then I, I started following this woman, wake up and read the labels, I think is her brand. Uh-huh. And I was like, holy shit. I know. All this stuff that's gluten-free, yes. low sugar, yes. organic. And then it's got all these gums and weird yes. filler products. Yeah. It's just different filler in uh-huh. it. Right. Yeah. So like really it, it's about eating simple, real food mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. is the whole this get yes. here, right? And with, especially with, with uh, Svenja. In general, her, in her life. Stuff, like, she'll make like really yes, cool bars but also, like yes. with nuts in them, and, but she'll make them herself. Yeah. And let me tell you, when she bites and smiles, you're like, oh, <laughs> you bite, Svenja. But it's all right. I was cracking up because last week on the trip, the kids got a, got a little lollipop or anything and it had a label on it, vegan. I was like, are you kidding me? A vegan oh, lollipop. Like a vegan lollipop. Sugar. But it's just like pure sugar, dying color, like the worst. So there's a rule when you go grocery shopping at um, organic Whole Foods stores. <laughs> okay, great. Tell me. Organic so Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> you just stay outside. like the Because when you enter, it's always like the food and veggie section. And then when you go all the way around, like the outside are right, all the like refrigerator. the Whole food things. Like the where you find like the not processed food. And when you dig into like the the single rows, there's this is where you find just the processed thing. So you just stay outside. We were gonna do this, Svenja. I don't know why. I don't know why we didn't end up doing it. But I want to go grocery us? shopping with you. You're gonna yes. go grocery shopping yes. with me. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, Come. I don't know about Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's is great. It's the same. They have great products. It's I, the same. I know. I know. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and I love their prices. It's good. I love. I mean, I'm I'm the biggest fan. I, but it's the same. You enter. You have the fruit and veggie section and then you have the outside aisle where you have like the okay you have to go with me the like nuts and stuff and then there are the aisles where there's like the process the the convenient food but when you stay outside well listen this is where you go shopping now okay so now for the for the um audience who's not lucky enough to have a trader joe's to have a, <laughs> well, to have a trader joe's or to have you like hold my yes. hand uh-huh. um, <laughs> and and go so wh- what do they buy like what what's like a nice grocery list for people just to keep in their house so that they have some sweets they have some salty they have the crunch i mean why do we i mean yes. we're used to we're used to chips uh-huh. we're used to lollipops so funny I'm, because i'm a grown ass woman i love yes. a chocolate situation uh huh Yes. So what do I do about that? Like, how do I? There are keep- always, you know, you can always upgrade or downgrade. There are always like the better choices or the not so good choices. For example, when it comes to chocolate, I love chocolate. Um, go for the dark. The darker, the better. And it's actually very healthy. It's actually mm. good for like cancer prevention, for healthy aging, and everything. Go for the dark version. Do not go for the milky version because that kills actually what it's good mm. in the chocolate. Mm-hmm. But there's the dark. that's like seventy percent. And actually, you only want to eat one bite of it because then it's enough. It's satisfying. And with a milky, sugary, you have the whole thing. You're just like, mm, I want to have more. Yeah. So if you do, just upgrade. Like the dark chocolate. Uh, chocolate is great. Do the dark chocolate. And even like if you want to have something crunchy, um, of course, you can make kale chips, which I really like. <laughs> but you can also have like nuts or you can, you know, Trader Joe's has like great... Um, raw nuts, cashews, and you can even put like chili, like roasted in the oven Mm -hmm. easily with like salt and chili and lime. And you can have that. So Mm -hmm. it's just, there's always like the better or the not so good version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and definitely when it comes to, because right now everything's getting like more and more expensive. It is, right? It's insane. Um, But then even more, homemade is best and it's just always cheaper. Mm. How do you keep things um, fresh? Like, do you, do you use, you don't use Ziploc bags. What do you use to keep these things? If you're like, the thing is, we buy packaged food 
partially because it stays good longer. Yep. They have preservatives and in it. Exactly. This is a real thing, right? Uh-huh. For mothers, okay? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Like your kids need, they we, they need a lot of snacks all the time. They do, yes, they do. They need um, a crunch. They need a cookie. Yes. They need, what, how yeah. do you bring them around? How do you keep them fresh? I mean, in the fridge, like it's, mm. of course, I try to like really spend some time to prep things. Of course, they don't, they, of course, they do not always eat what I make. Like, that's right. Let's yeah. be honest here. <laughs> yeah. And you let them eat whatever. I honestly all. must say that I grew up very healthy. Like for us, pancakes were brown. They were never white. They were always like brown, whole wheat and everything, mm. which looking back, I'm like, wow, cool. But, um, and um, of course at home, we were, there was only water and orange juice and fun fact, I do the same. There's like no soda at home. Yeah. And um, But every now and then, of course, if they want to have like a lemonade, they can have it. Because mm-hmm. if you limit yourself again, and it's the same for us grownups, if you always limit yourself, you're craving it even more. Mm-hmm. So if you're craving something sweet and the banana does not hit the spot, then you should have that dark chocolate or what. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with kids, I think. You can always, not always limit them because then they turn out into freaks. Mm-hmm, they do. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Halloween and they definitely had like way too much candy on Monday. Sure. Um, but then this is fine. Mm-hmm. Then the next day we come back to the balance and we try to... And, and even my older one, she's very aware. She's like, okay, this is just an exception, right? And so, yeah. I don't know, if you, if you just role model, I think that's very cool. Just show them. I was like, oh, I'm ha- I'm going to have that green juice now because I didn't have that yesterday or the day before. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, my kid actually goes to um, like a public school where they have um, uh, lunch. They serve lunch. Yes. Uh-huh. I don't know what is going on, but he has salad every day. This is amazing. I, I, I think he's being le- like honest with me. No, I, I think they are. Yes. Well, I don't know why he would report that he's having salad. Uh, it's like, yes. I love salad dressing. Okay, fine. Maybe that's not mm-hmm, whatever. But still their salad. Yes. But like, what's his deal? Like, uh-huh. I think they're, I think they have good instincts. A hundred percent. They do. They do. And they're getting yeah. good, f- you know, they're getting good options from the mm-hmm. world also. And making a choice is also good. Yeah. Danielle, I think that you and I come from a very <laughs> specific capsule of time in this country oh, where right. we are maybe like the most poisoned as far as what we've been like yeah. told to eat uh-huh. of like any fat free just everything just what we were fed when we were younger mm-hmm. what was acceptable she mm. grew up healthy because that's not what was available to her yeah. what they, they fed us dunkaroos like that is not a normal thing they fed to, us dunkaroos do you know what dunkaroos are it's frosting. It's cake frosting with like oh, with like uh-huh. tiny cookies uh-huh. in a packet, uh-huh. and then uh-huh. you. But I mean, in the end, you also turn out okay. <laughs> no, we actually not in our relationship no, with food, we, and Laura and I are uh-huh. so open about Interesting. it. Like uh-huh. I, I was, uh, you know, the the chronic dieting, mm-hmm. the it, like the real inability to sit in our own mm-hmm. body experience, because what we were raised on was diet culture, uh-huh. was you know. Fat Kate free. Moss had sort of like yeah. uh, she she had peaked during my sister's childhood, which uh-huh. was which was an experience just watching my older sister wanting to be real thin, uh-huh. you know. Mm-hmm. And so she po- she really poisoned the well. <laughs> and there are I people mean, who look like Kate Moss uh-huh. naturally, you yeah. know, like pause, right? You know, she's this little. She's she's not actually that thin, but she's small and she's petite and she doesn't have that much. She, she doesn't have like this huge appetite. There are people like that, but that was not a healthy experience. She yes. was. Mm-hmm. There, there were people who were like openly anorexic mm-hmm. in our childhood. Oh, yeah. um, and that was just like American culture yeah. for so long. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering like when you do counsel your, you know, or um, coach American women, do you find it different than when you're coaching um, your European clients? I would say yes and no, mm-hmm. because I think the struggle is probably real and the same for most of it. There's also like, there's a lot of emotional eating. I think yeah. everybody, everyone, go, everywhere, 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 just like this, like stress eating, overeating, um, this like frustration. Oh, I grab a, like, I don't know, like gummy bears or something. Yeah. This like level of, and it's, it's actually like when you look back in your childhood, there was probably the moment where you fell and then your grandma gave you chocolate. It was like, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. Get up. Uh, and this is Food just is love. where it starts. Like, oh, mm. wait, I fell chocolate 
I feel better now. Cool. And this is just like so set in your brain. Yeah. It's interesting. Actually, recently, Paz was upset about something. She didn't take a nap. She was cranky, blah, blah. And uh -huh. I was like, come, let's go get a cookie. And uh -huh. she was like, no, what? Yes. <laughs> what does, like, that's not, that doesn't, that doesn't have. make any sense. Yes, exactly. yes, that's so cool. That was really cool. I was uh -huh. like, she's so into uh -huh. oh, Also let's... so eye-opening. I know. Because I am a big, like, I had a bad day. Let's now, mm -hmm. like, go in. Yes. Like, you know, which yeah. is a terrible habit. It's uh -huh. a drug. And it's, now I'm trying, you know, I'm it's an adult uh -huh. that's trying to rewrite my relationship with food. Yes. So. And it's just, I, I mean, I know that. Like, sometimes I put the kids to bed and it's like 7.30, and it's like, oh, this was exhausting. Like, And I can envision myself going to the kitchen, finding like, oh, and now where's my, you know. Where's my reward? <laughs> my reward chart. I want to. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no, it's actually not cool. So, but this is just the way where we work. Do you have any advice for like women that like, you know, you say two days and then you'll want to go back to eating a salad. Uh -huh. What about us that maybe, mm, uh -huh. maybe <laughs> don't feel that immediately. <laughs> and then it kind of almost spirals for uh -huh. me into like two bad weeks of eating. Yes, or three. Right. But you know, my, uh -huh. my, I'll go the opposite way where yeah. I lean in. You're to not like, the only one. Yeah. So do you have any advice for I mean, I think it's us. just like very, <laughs> very natural. This Also this moment where it's like, well, now I had the cake and now that day does not matter at all. So I might as well have another piece of cake or just because done um so i recommend when i coach clients i for example i recommend just first of all the mindfulness like what you put into your body for example you eat something and then i recommend it's very weird but set your timer and before you eat something look at the time oh my sometimes God. you realize what it's, it's 15 minutes and it's like wait i want to eat again i just oops okay I want to like stretch that a little bit. So I recommend doing that. Just the the stopwatch and you'll be amazed by what's going on. Like how fast you eat without being hungry. Hmm. So for like do this and then stretch this to like one hour. Maybe you can do two hours without eating and just drinking water. Well, because we're, we're also under hydrated. I recently mm -hmm. spoke to a doctor and I was like, I'm tired all the time. Uh -huh. They wanted to check my thyroid. I've been on thyroid medication for 20 years. They're like, that's very dehydrating yeah. drugs. Yeah. I'd never thought of it because it was like always, you know, it's not, they're not stimulating at all. They're, 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 they replicate thyroid hormone. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But they're prescription drugs that I've taken for 20 years that keep me alive and talking to you and all of that. And they're like, you might be tired because you're dehydrated. Your organs need yes. hydration. And uh -huh. I was like, Svenja. And this is so fascinating because yesterday my sister texted me. She's nursing. She has a four month old baby. And congratulations. Thank you. And she texted me. She's like, I'm blown away. I just realized that I was eating gummy bears, you know, those Haribo. Delicious. <laughs> like two handful. And I realized actually my body was trying to tell me that I'm thirsty. I know, I know. And I misunderstood I know. and thought I need sugar craving. So she's like, I'm blown away. Yeah. I'm going to drink more water now. Yeah. And she's like, I just hate still water. So we're trying to find a way to make her drink more water. So I was like, okay, why don't you get like a beautiful little thing where you can put your water in it and add lime mint ginger just make it more fun and colorful and flavorful uh, but she's blown away she's like i just i always think i want sugar but actually i'm i'm thirsty it's really interesting because i do find that when i reach for sugar if i really feel the texture in my mouth you don't I'm parched uh-huh and i guess sugar makes you salivate uh-huh uh-huh so it's sort of giving you that feeling of hydration yes, yes. at least the wrong but it's also like the and again the the mindfulness the communication with your body is like listen so when we go back to your question um like the gaps between food like being aware because sometimes my a friend she just started the detox program the other day and she's like your detox yes program. i'm blown away because i realized how often i eat without being hungry of course it's like when you're in the office you have that drawer with like junk and you just eat without thinking of it. So just be mindful, like maybe in that drawer, maybe you put some nuts instead of the gummy bears. So when you reach, you just have something healthy you reach for. Are you the one who told me that if I have a sweet craving, I should get some olives to retrain yes, like, my palate? Uh-huh. That was cool. Uh-huh. 
That was cool. Just in general, trying to replace sweet cravings with savory things. Why is that? What's so bad about sugar? Not that, I mean, I know people always talk about sugar so bad for you, but then I think like, ah, oh, that's overblown. Never mind. Eh. Is there it- is like sugar, like for example, sugar feeds cancer cells, oh, tumors. Great. So <laughs> great. the fact that there's like here in the US, everything is like 10, like over sugared. It's just that feeds cancer cells that. Just also it like dehydrates you. So you're like all the wrinkles we may get in when we're aging. This can also come from all the like junk food we we do eat. Wow. So there's like this anti anti antioxidants like blueberries, mushrooms, broccoli. We should eat more of this to like age healthy. But also those things are like life changing foods that can help you stop or like maybe prevent the cancer um, Mm. growth. Mm. I was going to ask like what you think the connection between your former life as a fashion designer, although you do still reference yourself that way into this more, um, you know, nutritionist Mm -hmm. path. I don't know. For me, I see this heart centered experience, you know, like feeling beautiful in your skin so often comes from what you wear, but Yes. I don't know. Yeah. I Is mean, it that you're going one level deeper? I would say yes. Mm. And it's, of course, like designing clothes that you see on the street is very rewarding and fun. But when somebody texts me, like the other day, a woman, a client texted me a picture. She's like, listen, listen, look, like I did not fit in my wedding dress for the last 10 years. It's been 10 years. I changed my diet and I finally fit again. Oh my God. And she sent me that picture and I was like, wow, this is so amazing. Thank you for sharing. But it's just, people are so unhappy in their skin and their mm. bodies. And this is really, maybe because I'm very empathetic. Like I, that makes me very happy to see others that like finally feel better. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because not feeling good in your skin is just so... It just, it's so heavy and it's just like so sad. It really is. So this is where we live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is where we live. Not Germany, not New York. Yeah. Like in this. In the skin, in your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And we should just take a moment to celebrate. Like you are offering tangible advice and guidance through your website um, mm. for a very affordable price, which is a beautiful offering. You have a seven day Detox, you have a seven day mm-hmm. reset, you mm-hmm. have a 21 day detox, all extremely affordable. So if people are on a little bit of a tighter budget, they can still find yes. this guidance. That's mm-hmm. such a gift to give people. And I mean, on, on my Instagram, I share all the recipes for free, like nobody pays. It's just like you can easily do this. And this was uh, also like the community thing, connecting people and just like making people feel better in their skin. Hmm. You know, uh, what... <laughs> I'm just going to, I noticed that, but I was just (laughs) thinking about your smile at the end of each of your videos. And um, that in and of itself is such an offering. And I, I, I really do believe that um, we, we sometimes think that like the revolution, the feminist revolution, the, I don't know, political revolution comes through, I don't, aggression or loud, loud voices, but I really do think that a woman in her joy is a huge revolution. It is. It, it comes re- from within. Yeah. Uh-huh. And and the fact that you're like spreading that with like a little bit of cheekiness and a little bit of just sass and a red lip and it's simple. It's so contagious. Like I, I always joke with you whenever we go out to dinner that I'm like, I'm just like, just like scrolling through your page because you make me happy <laughs> that your, your happiness, your fulfillment is contagious and uh, it really is such an offering. It's so honest. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. I read this morning a quote saying, um, like, happiness is contagious and even unhappiness is contagious. So surround yourself with people that make you actually happy. Yeah. We were joking I, uh, uh-huh. before you came in. Um, Laura was like, I, I, I'm excited to meet your friends, Fanny. And she was just like ready to greet you. And I was like, oh, this is the happiest person you'll ever meet. <laughs> this is like, you know, like we don't always know. Like, and that's okay. Uh, you, some people are nervous. Some yeah. people are yeah. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> this is a great way to start the day. She eats a lot of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. Um, 
but also like you were asking, like if you do not crave the veggies, then um, if you start adding it, if you start eating more, then you will crave it more. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you these crispy Brussels sprouts you have on this page is where I'm getting started. Yeah. Sure. yeah. They look amazing. <laughs> but the smile at the end, right? <laughs> the bite. Um, yeah. All right. So do you have any parting words for our friends? Um, maybe, you know, I, 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 I did keep, I, I do keep in mind that we might be talking to some of your, you know, your followers who have been following you for a long time. You don't always share so much about your personal life. You don't share your kids. Um, on Instagram, you're like super focused on your mission to spread um, the good, good love. But is there, you know, I'm sure there are people who are curious about you and, <laughs> you know, I just want to hear um, a message a message from from your big empathetic <laughs> heart. I don't know. Um, I just try always to be authentic, and of course, I l lose lose it with my kids sometimes, or I just mm -hmm. I have bad days also. But there's something about um, I'm I'm a, I'm an optimistic. Like yeah. I just love. I don't know. It's just I wake up in the morning. I'm like, okay, let's do this. I'm a let's do this um, person. So um, if that is contagious then that's cool then take it guys we need more people like that in the world right <laughs> yes like what a world that would be <laughs> if we just like got to it where can we um find you for those who are just meeting you for the first time in this conversation so i have this very odd instagram account name yeah. it, oh I, yes i should say something about that one one oh, second yeah it's called moai it's m-o-a-i dot new york And the thing is that it actually the name, I did not come up with that name. There are five zones in the world that are called blue zones where people tend to live longer. Mm. And one is in Japan and Okinawa. And the reason why they live longer is, of course, because they eat very healthy, but also they are put in together in communities. And those are called moai. And they are like five people and they grow old. They give each other advice and they always have those five people surrounded. And the reason why they are end up being over 100 is because they're never lonely they always have advice and friends mm. and this community thing and i really love that name because it's just the community just like being together we're all in this together you know your authenticity but also but your your um your focus is so clear community yes yeah like You, you are the one who launched this site in the middle of a global pandemic. You're the one who threw that party as soon as like, <laughs> people were willing to have a party. Um, community. Yes. Food. If we can consider that when we go into the holidays. Yes. That this is the medicine. Community yeah. and, and food. food yeah. More than anything else. Yes. Stay close to yourself. Stay close to each other. And get in touch. Right? I mean, it, even if you just um, follow Svenja on Instagram, she's a bless. She has blessed your feed. Let me just tell you. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for having me. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. I'm excited for our grocery shop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>